Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, gentlemen, for uh, your testimony today on a really important topic. Now, I believe, and I, I was looking for the transcript, but at the joint press conference between President Xi and President Obama, that um, President China, I think, publicly stated that they don't engage in these kind of uh, cyber activities. Was that an accurate statement, um, if, if that was indeed what he said in terms of cyber warfare? It's pretty remarkable if you're in a press conference with another head of state and you just say something that seems to be pretty blatantly false. Well, it is, and uh, I think uh, <clears throat> apart from the statements, uh, at least for our part, it will be um, what happens now. What uh, is is will there be a change in uh, in their behavior? And as I said earlier. Uh, my well, hopes ranked eternal, but I, I personally am somewhat of a skeptic, but it will be our responsibility to uh, look for um, the presence or absence of, the, uh, of their um, purloining of uh, intellectual property and other information. And were any of you gentlemen or all of you gentlemen consulted on the terms of the agreement? Um, we were uh, aware of the negotiations, uh, <clears throat> but at least from normally intelligence uh, wouldn't be uh, a voice or shaper of a, a policy agreement like this between two heads of state. It will, I think our responsibility is uh, to report what they do. We participated in the buildup uh, of the uh, visit in terms of policy development, et cetera. But in, in terms of what went on between the two leaders of the, of the nations, we were not directly consulted. Admiral? And, and I was aware of the ongoing process and like Secretary of Work, same thing, part of the broad effort and preparation for the visit. But you weren't, you didn't see the terms of this uh, agreement before the, did you, Mr. Secretary? Um, let's assume that, you know, kind of, past this prologue here, and, you know, we were talking about intellectual property. As you know, our country has been trying to get the Chinese from uh, to stop stealing U.S. intellectual property for decades, really, and it hasn't really worked out very well. If Let's assume that, um, um, that this agreement, that there is some additional um, cyber theft uh, that we can attribute to China. What would you recommend uh, the actions of the United States should be, particularly in light of this agreement? I wouldn't be able to answer that. It's, uh, I would have to know what the degree of the uh, activity would be. Let's say another OPM kind of activity. I think we, the Department of Defense would recommend a very vigorous response. And, Mr. Secretary, what would, what would you, I mean, just give me a sense of what that would be, sanctions, retaliation? Uh, could be any of those, Senator, uh, maybe all of the above. It will depend upon the severity of the, uh, of the activity. Uh, but again, I know, this is, uh, I know this is a big point of contention with the committee. It is we are serious about cost imposition, and our statement is if you uh, participate in that, this activity, we will seek some type of uh, measure which imposes costs upon you. And we just do not think it's a proportional cyber attack for a cyber attack. It might be something entirely different, like a criminal indictment or sanctions or some other thing. Let me ask a kind of a related question for all three of you. How, and I know you've been discussing this, so I'm sorry if I'm kind of going over areas that we've already discussed, but help us think through the issue of rules of engagement here. I mean, we have rules of engagement in so many other spheres of the military that are well established. How do we think through these issues, which I think in some ways are the fundamental aspects of what we do in response to cyber attacks? Admiral, do you want to take a stab at that? So if you look at the defensive side, I'm pretty comfortable that we've got a good, broad recognition of what is permissible within a rules of engagement framework. Do we? I mean, between us and other nations? I. I I wouldn't, if you define it between us and other nations, I would know. I apologize. I thought your question was within a DOD kind of responsive framework. Um, if you want to expand it to a broader set of nations, then it's probably fair to say no. 
I, I would agree. Uh, I think when it comes to offensive, uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about offensive cyber warfare, uh, we probably do, do not have uh, uh, rules, defined rules of engagement. I agree with what Director Clapper said earlier, Senator, that this really is the Wild West right now. There is a lot of activity going on, both from nation state actors all the way down to criminals. Uh, and so sorting through each of the different attacks and trying to attribute how, what happened and uh, who it came from and who was responsible for it all, all demand specific responses on these attacks. But I agree totally with the committee that we need to strengthen our deterrence posture. And the best way to do that is continue to work through these things and make sure that everyone knows that there will be some type of cost. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 